Hey everybody, Roger here. I wanted to talk to you about a book that encouraged me. Uh, this book is about a childhood hero of so many of us. It's called The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. The book is by a person who knew Mr. Rogers personally, who met him, interviewed him, and built a relationship with him uh, via letters over the course of several years, and talked about something that wasn't talked about much during Mr. Rogers' lifetime. So if you're like me, you grew up knowing about Mr. Rogers, and if you're like me, you watched Mr. Rogers. Uh, but then when you hit your 20s, maybe, a lot of rumors about Mr. Rogers sort of swirled on the internet. Uh, <laughs> Um, people my age, we tend to be cynical and tear down anything that seems pure or wholesome, uh, just kind of what Gen X and millennials seem to do. Um, and some things were swirling around the internet about Mr. Rogers being not all these seemed. And one of the funny things was, it was claimed that he was a sniper in Vietnam. <laughs> um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, I think, to serve your country. But just sort of these mysteries about who the man actually was. Well, if you want to know who he really was... Um, one, I think you just have to watch his show because I think what you saw was actually just what you got. And if you want to know more, you could read this book, The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers, Spiritual Insights from the World's Most Beloved Neighbor by Amy Hollingsworth. Um, I learned a lot about the man. And if you're like me, you grew up just kind of admiring him. So for so many people, Mr. Rogers represented uh, calm and peace and something very human uh, in a world of just crazy TV. And it turns out that's actually exactly why Mr. Rogers went into TV. Um, he was, um, to tell you a little bit about the man, he was overweight and weak as a boy, and he was bullied. And in the moments that he was weak, feeling weak and overweight and felt like he physically wasn't what he should be, uh, he decided that he wanted to be an advocate for people rather than an attacker. Now, we're going to get to what that means in a minute because I think it's been misunderstood. Um, as far as being misunderstood, I've actually heard Mr. Rogers, um, I've heard a right-wing media station actually accuse him of, I think, Marxism or socialism. Um, and... I've heard, uh, that, well, the Boston Globe, I think it was, did sort of a hit piece on him, saying that it was self-esteem psychobabble, was Mr. Rogers' uh, philosophy. Now, if you watch him, you do see some heavy themes about self-esteem. And I did wonder for a bit, is he playing too heavily into the, the uh, self-centric philosophy that so many people, unfortunately, seem to have? Um, it's all about me and my feelings and my... Me, 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 which can be unhealthy. Um, I don't actually think he was any of those things. Again, he was bullied as a kid and decided that he wanted to be an advocate, advocate for people. Um, it turns out also that Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, as a boy, tried to get physically fit. Now, he did get trim, to his credit. Uh, he swam. He had a routine. He swam at the same pool, I think, every day. So he could maintain a consistent look for the children who watched his show and just be a, a sort of a constant for them. He didn't even want to change shape. He wanted to be the same. And he did get trim, but he actually tried to do physical strength training exercises. He bought, uh, he subscribed to something from, a, I think, a bodybuilder at the time, <laughs> trying to get, you know, bulked up. So Mr. Fred Rogers did see the value in physical strength, and yet, I think he blamed his frame. He just couldn't quite, <laughs> he couldn't quite get there. Um, so he did actually value strength, but he didn't just value obviously physical strength. He valued a different kind of strength that I think we see within Mr. Rogers. And this is why I think even as grown adults in this crazy world, it's worth thinking about who the man was, what he actually stood for. If you recall, there's a famous clip of Mr. Rogers on YouTube now of him going before a government official trying to get funding for public television. And I listened to an interview with his wife, and he, she says she could tell that Fred Rogers was nervous. And it feels weird to call him Fred, Mr. Rogers. She knew he was scared. And yet, in his mind, he knew this was the right thing to do. So though he was scared, he went before this government official 
And though people actually laughed at him, um, as he's giving his presentation, and the government official sort of tends to be very cynical and mock him, Fred Rogers just chooses to be restrained and have a slow cadence and express gratitude and fight for what he thought was would be good for children. And I think that's the kind of strength that Fred Rogers really did just embody. So some things about he was a man who was when TV was rather new and he was new to him, he didn't watch much television. He did see even in his day themes on television, which was a new medium that he felt were very dehumanizing. He saw a lot of excess violence, humans against humans. He thought there were very um, undignified things that took place on humanity in the television. And he was really concerned about what effect that might have on children's minds, especially as a man who saw value and dignity in the human person. And so um, you get a lot more details about this in the book, but Fred Rogers, if you ever watch this show, from the very beginning, he does exactly what television is, was not supposed to do. By the way, if you've ever watched much YouTube, Fred Rogers' show would go exactly against what they would tell you on a YouTube channel to build your YouTube channel. It wasn't flashy. He wasn't trying to grab your attention. He wasn't trying to be loud and noisy because the philosophy of TV and YouTube is to out-noise the noise. And so the noise level just keeps doing this because everyone's out trying to grab your attention, out-shout each other, if you will, um, with crazy crazy flashing lights and whatever they can do to get your attention. Just like business signs when you go through a business park. Fred Rogers show, Mr. Rogers show. From the very moment, it's slow, peaceful music going through the neighborhood. And if you recall, there's a traffic light and the light is yellow. Just an indicator. It's time to slow down. And then if you keep watching the show, there was a time when the trolley would go, if you recall, to the land of make-believe. And in make-believe, Daniel Tiger's tower actually didn't have any hands on the clock. It's just a place that was supposed to be still. Because that's who Fred Rogers was, and that's what he believed in. He believed in a noisy world of dehumanization. He thought it was valuable for us to be able to pause, have silence. Because silence, he thought, led to reflection because you can't constantly distract yourself with your phone or your television or, or whatnot. And in that reflection, it could bring moments of gratitude. Sorrow, yes, but you could face that sorrow and have gratitude. And here's the thing about Fred Rogers that he never said explicitly on his television show. And this isn't me as a religious person trying to cram something down your throat. It is not. Um, it is simply what he was to all who knew him. He was a Christian minister. He was a Presbyterian, <laughs> ordained Presbyterian minister. And he hoped that that silence that he could bring, that pause for reflection in which he showed care for you and taught you that it's okay to be quiet and still and reflect and have gratitude might bring your thoughts to something higher. And he thought that might bring our thoughts to something to God. Um, and I think for so many people, even unbeknownst to us at the time, yeah, he had some success in that. Um, he thought that there was uh, just value in silence and reflection. And I think there's a poet who said that um, one of the curses of modern men is that the modern man is terrified of sitting alone with his own thoughts. I think that's very true. We always try to cram our minds with social media and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Nothing wrong with those things necessarily, but we do try to cram every spare moment in which we don't want to sit alone with our thoughts or reflection. We cram them full of distractions and entertainment. That is exactly what Mr. Rogers was fighting against, even in his television show. So by all accounts, his show should not have worked. <laughs> and yet it did. Um, many parents have recounted, and I can attest to this as a child back in the day, that you'd have so many shows that were trying to grab your attention, short attention span, even Sesame Street was just short clips that Mr. Rogers, for some reason, so many kids would just sit there mesmerized by the man because the man would just sort of look into the camera, into your eyes, and have a conversation with you. And he'd treat you with respect and dignity. 
that you would say things in a way that were clear and you knew were safe. And as I got older, I thought, man, this is boring. Why? Why is this on TV? Why is this cool? But I remember when I was a little guy, man, this guy was safe. He was he was saying things, whether it was simple, I'm going to take you to tour a crayon factory, or if it was him feeding his fish. You knew that he cared about people and that this was a safe person who was worth spending the time with some conversation. And it turns out that the man used his television show to very subtly promote so many things that his wife explicitly has said in interviews are religious values. Um, not, not the least of which is silence and reflection in a busy world of consumerism. But because Mr. Rogers saw all human beings as a Christian, as created in the image of God, he saw value in every human being, whether he agreed with them or not, whether they did what he wanted or not, whether they, whether they were like him or not, Mr. Rogers saw value in that individual. I want to say this also, this is a question I had, did Fred Rogers, did Mr. Rogers, um, try to build self-esteem when children misbehave, when people do things that they're not supposed to do? And this book actually addresses that, uh, the simple faith of Mr. Rogers, because Mr. Rogers had said, you know, I hope you tell your children that you're proud of them, but I also hope you don't tell them that you're proud of them when they're doing something that would hurt themselves or others. Because you want to love and affirm the person, but what you don't want to do is approve of behavior that's not safe or healthy for them or someone else. Because you want them to be okay and know that they're loved and safe, but you want other people to know the same. That was a little clue there. But in that, if you recall, Mr. Rogers, whether it was popular or not, would deliberately choose to have on people and just give little subtle clues. So for example, in a time of division, Fred Rogers had a man onto his program and he just sat with them in a pool and they put their feet together in the pool. And to a child who may not have an understanding of the divisions or why people might be divided, you might just see two men sitting together in a pool and having a conversation and saying, these, these guys are together. This is in, in, in a good conversation. As you grow up, you realize that that was Mr. Rogers saying something because that particular man and people like him at the time weren't welcome in certain places. And Mr. Rogers was just trying to point out, this man is valuable too. And I thought that was, um, it was Mr. Rogers reminding those who needed reminding that this man is also our neighbor. And that was obviously a big theme of Mr. Rogers' program. He wanted you to feel like a neighbor because he actually saw us as his neighbors. And neighbors are people who should get, get along and treat each other with respect and dignity. This reminded me of a passage of scripture when someone came to Jesus and he asked, I think, the, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then someone asked him, but who is my neighbor? Trying to justify himself. In other words, yeah, I'll, I'll treat my neighbor, I'll love my neighbor as myself, but, but who is my neighbor? I think Fred Rogers simply saw everyone as his neighbor. And I thought, as an adult, looking back, it seemed to me at the time that maybe that's how all adults thought. It's not how all adults think now. And I now know that's not how all adults thought then. Yet Mr. Rogers and all the busyness and the craziness and the divisions of his time was simply saying, this man too is my neighbor and I care about this person. And I thought that was a really nice touch. 
Fred Rogers, if you didn't know, um, he wore a cardigan. He'd, he'd come into the house and he'd change and he'd put his cardigan on and change his shoes. And that was just yet another indicator to slow down and reflect. And now it's time to spend time together. Um, he, all of his sweaters, I found out, were made by his mother. It's a pretty interesting thing. I guess one is in the Smithsonian in D.C. You can go see it. Pretty cool. Um, but the man was so attuned to trying to make sure people felt cared for that, as you probably know, there was a, um, a blind girl who, and I wonder if this is a child, he would feed his fish, but he would usually say, I'm feeding the fish. And I'd wonder why, but because supposedly a blind girl wrote to Mr. Rogers and said, Mr. Rogers, I'm worried that you're not feeding your fish, but she couldn't see it. And so when this man found out about that, he would just make a point for that little girl who was blind and who, anyone else who might be blind to hear him say, I'm feeding the fish. <laughs> just, just so they knew. That was the level of attention and detail that Fred Rogers uh, took. Now, here's where I think um, Mr. Rogers might be particularly valuable to so many people, even now. Um, though he saw value in reflection and silence and in prayer and in gratitude, and though he saw value in other human beings as being his neighbor, our neighbors, we're each other's neighbor, and we should treat each other with dignity and respect and do our best, even when laughed at and mocked as he was as a child and as he was as an adult, and as sadly something in my generation have done to the man as we've gotten older, to show those people respect in turn. Um, and I don't think at all that he meant to excuse inappropriate behavior. In fact, there are a couple of times when Mr. Rogers, as meek and as kind as the man was, famously uh, put his foot down a couple of times. Um, as small in stature as he was, once on set, he famously corrected a cast member. He shut down production and stopped production and kindly but firmly uh, corrected the cast member on something they said in the show. Um, also, I recall when he was giving one of the speeches towards the end of his life um, in front of so many celebrities and Hollywood well-known people, actors, they sort of giggled and laughed at him a little bit. And the man was so kind, and yet still he put his foot down a little bit, got a little bit firm, and it's almost like they realized, oh, this is, a, this is a man standing in front of us, and he's worthy of our respect, and he's trying to help us. And so in a moment, they went from laughter to, as he asked them to do, pause for a moment of silence, and think about someone in their life who loved them and wanted the best for them when they were growing up. And by the end of that few moments, um, 30, 40, 50-year-old adults millionaires were bawling. Um, just an interesting phenomenon. I think part of that is not just because he could put a foot down, but really because they knew that he genuinely cared about them. It's interesting to me, um, Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche thought that so many people live and they don't live as them, their honest selves. They live as though a mask. So what they really want is they lust and they want power or wealth or to control others or to enslave the people above them. And so they wear masks and they don't actually live in accordance with who they truly are on the inside. They sort of live a lie. I found it very interesting in this book, Fred Rogers actually had a very similar theme from a very different Christian perspective. Fred Rogers was very concerned with living as his honest self. And I think this is a very valuable thing. He never tried to change who he was when he got laughed at to make an adjustment. And if you watch his show, and I think this is why he got laughed at by people my age who grew up watching him, he does things that just seem kind of cornball or goofy. He might stumble over something in a dance move um, I remember one time he went swimming, and you, you watch him swim, and you think, that yeah, that ain't it, you know. Um, 
he would be ignorant of some, he'd be naive of simple things. And instead of being embarrassed or when people laughed at him to cower, he would usually just tell them if, when they laughed at him because he'd been through this before and he'd already decided what he would do. He'd usually say, that's okay. And he would laugh at himself. Not because he was embarrassed about himself, but because he was not trying to be fake or something that he wasn't. He was a very vulnerable person who would talk about very difficult things with children in a way that was very simple and caring and that they could make sense of. Even if that made him seem uncool or cheesy or cornball or naive, it just didn't really seem to be a concern of his. He had decided that he wanted to be very consistently honest with who he was and so that people would know exactly who he was and what he was about. And when people treated him unkindly or laughed at him, he just wouldn't return that back against them. And so he tried to fight for what he thought was right and true without trying to tear down individuals. And in that, I think he's almost like sort of like the anti-social media <laughs> um, and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and yada yada. It just seems like so many of us are so centered on ourselves that we're trying to grab attention and we base our self-esteem and self-worth off of this. And we try to convince people that our lives are some things that sometimes are just not. And that is exactly what this man seemed to refuse to do. He wasn't trying to grasp our attention and then be something that he wasn't. He just wanted to show you a real human being who cared about you and who could disagree with charity. And when you did him wrong, he just would do his best to not do that in return. And in that way, you could feel safe and valued. And I think that's why some people looking back um, realize there was really something to this guy that other children shows he watched just kind of fell apart. Um, he was concerned about childhood psyche and the loss of innocence. And what he tried to do is, I'll tell you one thing that I noticed, was you see this idealized world of make-believe in Mr. Rogers, where people are all kind to each other and the mailman and all these different positions talk like adults should talk to each other with dignity and respect. And then as you grow up, you realize the world is a very jaded, cynical, fractured place. And it makes you wonder, you know, was this guy wrong? Was he, was he living a make-believe? But I think instead, he was just trying to help us see the value in doing things the right way. So I think um, in a world of violence and cynicism, nihilism, distrust in our neighbor, Mr. Rogers reminds us that it's good to be okay, simple and hopeful and neighborly. Uh, it's good to see the good in others and in yourself when no one else sees it, because there are good things about us and about others. Um, and in all that, I think Mr. Rogers, um, seeing the fracture and fragment in the world, the busyness, the noise, the cynicism, just wanted to be a beacon, um, maybe a stem against the Amazon River of showing something pure and wholesome, calm, reflective, not based in consumerism or selfishness or ideology, but just something dignified and safe and that's okay to be silent and if you have feelings it's okay to not deny those feelings but to express them in ways that are civil in ways that are uh, safe in ways that are healthy for yourself and the person with whom you might have those feelings just simple little things i think the man tried to instill as an adult they just fascinate me now, one thing I noticed is that um, as much as I respect Fred Rogers and his wife, I do see that 
there's also a value in being not always gentle, meaning that, so I served in the United States Marine Corps. Now, not to get into politics, but I do know that in certain situations, it is useful to have some type of physical strength and be able, be able to be aggressive in certain situations if you had to be, to be bold if you had to be. And that's where I wondered if there's a disconnect between someone like, you know, if I grew up watching Arnold Schwarzenegger and John Wayne or something like this, and I saw this little man named Fred Rogers, and I grew up, I'm like, so which, which kind of man is correct here? I think the answer is actually pretty simple. Uh, Fred Rogers did value physical strength, though he just didn't seem to be able to get it. So there's nothing wrong with that. But even in his, as he seemed to think, a frail frame, he was just able to stand up for what he believed in, but do it in a kind way in which his opponent knew that he genuinely cared about that person. If that's not something that we can't learn from today, I just don't know what is. So if you're interested in it, this book is um, talks about Christianity. It talks about how the fact that Fred Rogers might have learned his views of neighbors from some Benedictine monks that moved into his neighborhood as a boy that interacted with his family. I didn't know that. Pretty interesting stuff. So I think the man was all right. I think he's a good guy. And uh, maybe not a perfect individual, but somebody who I think saw some things coming down the pipeline and did whatever he could in his own little way um, to give us something better. The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. Take you a few hours to read it. I'd recommend it. Hey, I am going to try to make more videos on um, culture, books, philosophy, faith in these crazy times, things like this. Um, so if you want to stick around, I will try to have content uh, talking about some, some, some things that might be interesting to you. Hey, as always, whoever you are, if you've watched this video, I just want to say, though I may not can see you, I may never have met you, I genuinely appreciate the, the time that you take to watch these videos, and I hope you're doing well. God bless. Thanks. Take care.